Hello, my name is Evan Jolly. I help the Arrays team with uh, some content and research, and today I'm talking about Llama Index's new instrumentation module. The new instrumentation module is set to replace the legacy callbacks module, uh, and we are in a the deprecation period for that uh, you know old legacy callbacks module. So, so if you have pre-existing and integrations with that module, uh, you're going to want to migrate those as soon as possible. This new module is going to make uh, Llama Index a lot more straightforward to use, uh, and a lot of what's new is going to be caught with the Llama Index instrumenter uh, callback within Arise Phoenix, so it'll be even more straightforward. Uh, let's go through a couple key parts of it. All right, so the core classes uh, within this module are events, which essentially just represents you know a single moment of time in a code, something happening. We have the event handler as well, which pretty self-explanatory. It you know, listens for events and executes logic based on those events. Next, we have spans, which represent the execution flow of a particular part of the application's code. Uh, so essentially a sequence of events. Also pretty explanatory, we have a span handler, uh, which handles spans. This is responsible for entering, exiting, and dropping a span if there's an error. And finally, we have a dispatcher, which is essentially the central nucleus that helps all of these things happen. Hopping over to Phoenix now, as I mentioned earlier, all of these new classes uh, get wrapped up within here we have the uh, the Llama Index Instrumenter, which makes it super easy to use from a Phoenix perspective. Now that we know exactly what's in the instrumentation module, uh, let's take a look at an example and see if we can't build something cool with the integration between Phoenix and Llama Index. Uh, today we're going to be building a multimodal query application uh, that can check out some materials from OpenAI's Dev Day and uh, maybe glean what they have in store for us. So here we have our code. Uh, you'll need to install necessary packages and import them as such followed by some environment stuff and setting some endpoints. Following that, we have two really simple utility functions uh, that allow our agent to execute some steps that we have in store for it. Following that, we prime our OpenAI API uh, to get ready to answer some questions for us and look at some images. Uh, this URL is to a blog post put out by OpenAI talking about what they announced at Dev Day. You, you can see the blog post here. Uh, as you can see, just pretty general information that a bot you know, could check out. And following that, we have uh, the start of the show where all of this gets executed. Uh, again, you can see here the JPEG URL leads to an image that was also put out on Dev Day. I believe it was on that previous URL for the text blog post. Here is that image. Uh, this is an image of the OpenAI Developer Playground uh, with some instructions uh, for a GPT called Galileo uh, to answer questions about the universe. Awesome. Let's see what happens when we run it. As you can see, the agent is making observations and taking action. As you can see, the agent was able to pick up what was on the screen including Galileo, uh, the function section, and code interpreter. And as you can see here, at my local uh, 6006, or however you uh, choose to configure it within your own code, uh, every step that that agent took, every query that was ran, uh, is super available for us to you know, diagnose or, or, or check out. Uh, you can see here how it created a task, how it ran through some steps, and how uh, you know, it outputted a finalized response, talking about the the new features in the OpenAI Playground. Uh, this really is just unparalleled support uh, for LM applications. And that's about it. I hope you found this video helpful and uh, thanks for tuning in.